honored to be asked to participate in this with all of you. Hi, I'm Jody. Thanks for accepting our invitation. Would you please introduce yourself? Sure. So, my name is Dorothy Sales. I'm speaking to you today from my apartment here on Wa in Washington, D.C., uh, just eight blocks from our nation's capital. So I'm in the capital city of the United States. I am from a large family of five siblings. I have four sisters and one brother. And as we were growing up, uh, kind of the pinnacle of what was important within my family was certainly education. And my parents sacrificed a significant amount for each of us to receive our education. Um, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, in addition to kind of putting the priority on education, there was also um, an aspect of public service and giving back to the community or to a greater good. So that those were kind of principles that I was reared with. Um, I went to high school down in Jacksonville, Florida, but I am from Boston originally. I went to college in Connecticut, a small liberal arts college, Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut, and I studied economics. And uh, while I was finishing up school, I, I did lots of interviewing with lots of different companies and organizations. And at the time, I accepted an offer um, to be a corporate marketing representative because I thought it would give me an opportunity to learn a good deal about business. And so I worked uh, for this company for about five years and I learned a lot about business. But I realized at the end of the day, um, kind of making money for large corporations wasn't quite enough for me. I wanted to do more. Um, and then I went to work for my high school for two years. Because um, I wanted to take those skills and and marketing that I had learned and relationship building, and when I kind of stepped back to think about what was important to me, once again the idea of education came out, and I went to work for my high school for two years, and that was wonderful. And still, even though it was in Jacksonville, it was still somewhat of an international setting because students came from all over the world. There were 21 countries represented within the high school. Uh, so that was a fortunate experience. And after working at my high school, I knew I wanted to kind of do something bigger, something more global, and really wanted to learn more about the world. And it was then that I applied to become a Peace Corps volunteer. And we can probably talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but I lived in Ukraine for almost two and a half years and learned a new language, looked great experience. And having finished up with Peace Corps in Ukraine, I really wanted to work for Peace Corps as staff. So I came back here to Washington and I was fortunate to get a job uh, at Peace Corps headquarters and I managed a United Nations program for five years. And that was the United Nations Volunteer Program. And after that, I had the good fortune to go to graduate school with Gina and uh, enrolled in Harvard's Kennedy School of Government, doing a mid-career program, getting a master's in public administration, but with a focus on international development and diplomacy. And since that time, I've worked for both a variety of NGOs as well as the government. Um, working for Oxfam America, working for the Clinton Foundation, and then returning to Washington to work for Peace Corps again. And since finishing up my time with Peace Corps, I've worked for a couple of smaller NGOs here in Washington. So that's a, a general summary of kind of what I've done, and we can probably talk more in detail based on the questions that are to come. Thank you, that's really informative. Um, would you please share your experience in Peace Corp? Sure, sure. So um, just to perhaps give a little background on what Peace Corps is. Uh, so Peace Corps is an agency, independent agency within the federal government. And it was started by 
President John F. Kennedy in 1961. And President Kennedy started Peace Corps with the mission to help promote world peace and friendship. And the mission is um, drawn out by three aspects. And one is to provide technical assistance to countries that request the technical assistance. And the second aspect is to share American culture with other countries. And then the third aspect is for Americans to bring those cultures where they've lived and worked back to the United States to share those different international cultures with Americans. So those, those three main aspects to Peace Corps' mission. And um, Peace Corps was always something I thought about um, while I was in college and I just kind of decided to start off in the private sector and I'm grateful I did that. But in my later 20s, I kind of revisited the idea of Peace Corps and um, I applied. And when back, back then during the application process, you apply and you try to be open to whatever country might be in need of your skills and background. And so Peace Corps volunteers go for almost two and a half years. It's the two year commitment and three months of training. And that training is done in country with language and both cross-cultural training. So I spent um, three months in Ukraine training for, it was almost like being back in school again. So three months of language and cross-cultural training. And then I was assigned to a, um, a work site. My work site was a management institute. So where I was teaching and working with a business incubator. I was in Ukraine in 1995. So the country had just recently become independent. And so they were really um, needing or wanting kind of to learn Western business practices and kind of do a lot of restructuring of both their economy and their infrastructure. But again, Peace Corps has operated in over 140 countries. Uh, the countries where Peace Corps operates are countries that are still developing countries or transitioning countries. Um, and Peace Corps only operates in countries where they're invited by the host country. But Peace Corps was a wonderful experience for me. It certainly opened my eyes to kind of uh, the greater international world and kind of the work that it's done all over the world. Uh, and I'm grateful for that experience. While living in Ukraine, um, I was there to witness a new constitution that was passed, a new currency established, and the stock market opened. So it was a very vibrant time. And I'm very grateful to my experience with Peace Corps, I certainly feel like I um, received much more than I gave. Um, and it is a volunteer assignment. Um, I wasn't earning a salary at the time. I was earning a stipend, so just enough to kind of cover the, the cost of living in the country. But Peace Corps was a great, great experience for me. Uh, how did your experience in Peace Corps benefit you? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, when I think about kind of the skills uh, that I learned while being in Peace Corps, certainly perseverance was a very important one. Um, in Ukraine, often there was no running water or water wasn't running when it was supposed to be running or electricity wasn't working or uh, there were there were certainly challenges at different times. Um, also, missing my family, being away from my family for that period of time because I am very close to my family. But kind of gaining a, a greater self sense of independence um, by living and working in a new country. But perhaps most importantly, um, living and working in a country where I was learning a new language and learning a new culture and interacting with people that even though from the looks on the outside they didn't look that different than me um certainly how we were brought up and kind of um many different 
cultural nuances. Uh, so you can speak Ukrainian and when you can speak you, uh, foreign language, uh, what advantage do you think you have? Yeah, I think anytime a person can learn a new language, it's a wonderful opportunity. And I think um, learning a new language can certainly open doors uh, to people, uh, for people and provide opportunities that you might not expect. I, I did learn Ukrainian, um, so the three months we spent in training, I studied Ukrainian every day. However, when I went to my site uh, in Ukraine, I was in the eastern part of the country, I was actually on the Russian border, and so the town where I lived, they spoke only Russian. <laughs> and so they laughed at me for learning Ukrainian. Uh, but that's where perseverance comes into play. And certainly there are aspects of Russian and Ukrainian that sound similar, but there are some parts that are very different. And just for example, to say, how are you? In Ukrainian, it's yakstrave. And in Russian, it's kapdala. So very, very different. So I needed to learn Russian. And I wasn't such a good student once I was working full time. But I learned my Russian language just simply through talking with people. I didn't really study it academically, but I learned through speaking with people. Um, and in terms of, uh, I use my Ukrainian and Russian now, kind of just in social settings. Um, I might use it here in Washington with fellow um, return Peace Corps volunteers or Ukrainians or Russians that I meet. Um, I have traveled through much of Eastern Europe, so I, I, my Russian and traveling through Russia certainly came into play. Um, and I've translated a little bit for people when they've needed it. Uh, but I think any time a person can learn a new language, it can open up doors and it's a great opportunity to kind of develop both personally and professionally. Uh, for Taiwanese students, if they want to learn new language, um, what advice would you give them? Yeah, I, I think most importantly, be open. Uh, and again, um, depending on where a person's interests might lie, uh, um, in terms of what language they might want to learn. Um, certainly, it, it seems like um, many Taiwanese students that I know have learned English, and um, certainly with interest in doing foreign exchanges, whether students are coming here to the US, um, that can certainly help. But I think in terms of, it should be fun also, it is important to study academically, um, but I think the opportunity to to think of language as a fun thing to do um, and the cultural exchanges that can take place. And I'll give just a small example. Um, when I was a Peace Corps volunteer, I was working with both graduate students and undergraduate students, but with the undergraduate students, I hosted a cooking class every few weeks. And they loved coming to my apartment, and we would, I would share with them an American cooking recipe. But it was fun for them because they learned these different words in English. But then they learned a little bit about American culture as well. Um, and so I think that learning a new language doesn't always have to be serious. And any opportunity a person has where they can engage in conversation, that is so very important. And another example of my time in Ukraine, so when I arrived to Ukraine, I spoke no Ukrainian and no Russian. And then, as I explained, I learned Ukrainian for three months in a classroom setting when I was in training, but I arrived to my city where they only spoke Russian. And a couple of times people would ask me, where did you learn your Russian? And I would say, in Russian back to them, not Ulitsa. And that meant I learned it on the street. And one time a person said to me, 
You speak your Russian with such authority, but such very poor grammar. <laughs> and I was okay with that, because I realized I hadn't studied the language academically, but I could be understood. And so I think um, how important it is to become conversational in a language, and not just study it and read it, but to become conversational is so important. And just creating any opportunity that you can to create opportunities for that conversation and making it fun. Uh, you have interact with people from different countries and for young people who want to learn how to communicate with others, what suggestion would you give them? Um, I think again to be open, open to new cultures and customs, um, to, to understand that there might be differences in language, um, but it's only through doing and making some mistakes that we learn how to be better. So um, the importance of not being timid um, when communicating with people of other countries and cultures, certainly it's very important, of course, to be respectful, but kind of not being timid in language skills, and it's okay if some mistakes are made along the way. Um, and what else? I, I think that communication is always a two-way street and even though someone might be a young student and you might be communicating with someone that's much senior to you, um, we can always learn lessons from each other. And so just because a student might be young um, and have less experience doesn't mean that older person uh, can't learn lessons from you. So I think, um, yeah, being open to sharing experiences and, and cultures, uh, uh, and then being respectful of cultures also is important. Can you share your working experience at Clinton Foundation with us? Sure. So, um, I worked for the Clinton Foundation for two years, from 2007 to 2009. And back then, it was still in a startup phase. Uh, President Clinton started the foundation just a few years earlier. And kind of the mission of the Clinton Foundation is building partnerships between businesses, NGOs, governments, and individuals. And I was working in the Boston office, and the Boston office um, served as the administrative headquarters for the foundation's international initiatives. And the two largest include uh, the Global Health Initiative and the Climate Change Initiative. And as I said, it was still in a startup phase, so we were really building an infrastructure. I was working um, to help build strategic partnerships. Uh, and we were doing that through outreach and relationship building, both with academic institutions, uh, corporate partners, and other geographic targets. Uh, I was working to help build the networks to both recruit and retain staff. Uh, we went in within a two-year period from about 300 staff to over 750 within the health initiative. So it was really growing exponentially at the time. Uh, and, and the main focus at that time for the health, health initiative at that time was HIV AIDS and sending specialists out to different developing countries helping it with the HIV AIDS crisis. Since that time, the health initiative has expanded to also include other health issues that are ongoing. Um, but I'm grateful for my time at the Clinton Foundation. I certainly learned a lot. Was there any special experience at Clinton Foundation? Um, well, certainly getting to meet President Clinton was pretty special. <laughs> uh, that, that was a, a, every year when we had the holiday party, we got to spend a little bit of time with him, and that was that was a great opportunity. Um, 
I think probably one of my greatest takeaways um, were based on, again, coming back to people and the very bright people that uh, we recruited and that are working at the Clinton Foundation uh, and very focused on the tasks. Many people that are at the Clinton Foundation had come from the private sector and had been in very successful business, um, but had given up very large salaries to come work for the foundation. Um, and people were very driven and very focused. Uh, and then another very unique set, um, some of the partnerships I was working with uh, included working with some of the top management consulting firms. Um, and they would actually allow their staff members to come and volunteer for a period of time at the Clinton Foundation in our overseas operations. Um, in your experience, did you hire any Taiwanese? I have actually. It was when I was at the Clinton Foundation. Um, we hired some very bright, hardworking staff that had finished up um, graduate programs in the Boston area, both at Harvard and I think it was Tufts and um, a couple different Taiwanese graduate students uh, that came to work at the Clinton Foundation. And the ones that I was responsible for hiring um, were in the finance and accounting area. Yeah. Um, and I was very, very impressed with their work, their intelligence, their work ethic, um, and really became friends with them as well. Um, and I'm grateful to that kind of uh, friendship as well as um, kind of the professional relationship. Uh, when you hire someone, what factors would you con consider? Certainly the academic qualifications, that was primary. Academic qualifications that we were looking, again, these particular individuals um, were in the land accounting area. So we had very strong quantitative backgrounds, and that was important. Uh, they had very, very strong references, um, and I think that's always something important to think about as young people are, are starting off their careers and um, know that the impression you make at one job follows you to the next because the employer always wants to speak with references and and these individuals had fantastic references. They had good English language skills. Uh, you know, English was not their first language, but they were comfortable and confident in their language skills. Um, but else, and they got along with others. Certainly being a team player and the ability to work as a team and get along with others is very important when looking at different work environments. Um, so they they met all of those criteria. Uh, so again, academic accomplishments, technical qualifications, strong references, good work attitude, hardworking people, and get along with others and good language skills.